Greetings DMs, GMs, and players. This is the Insomniac GM. I've been sitting on this topic for maybe over a month now. And um, so essentially back like a month ago, I was at work and I ended up learning one of my customers loves playing tabletop games. And he started telling me about a concept for a character he had. And he wanted to do something in Starfinder. Well, with his, um, with his robot. And the DM wouldn't allow him to use the robot to scout ahead because there were no rules for it. And they even thought it was a good idea, but because there was no rules for it, they wouldn't allow them. And this brought up a subject him and I talked about. I was like, hey, this is, you know what, this is a video I should make. And then I've sat on it forever. So today I want to talk about how the rules in the book are just an outline like a suggestion, you don't have to run the rules exactly. Now, the reason why I have Tasha's in front of me is because you're paying for a book where they literally have a single page that's like, hey, we give you permission to run the game any way you want, change the rules. Well, if you're going to buy Tasha's for that one page, um... There you go. I just told you what the mechanic is, and you can now apply it into any of your tabletop games. But, in all seriousness, though, in tabletop role-playing games, they have rules in there. You don't have to run them exact. You know, if you don't like a class, you can take it out. If you think something would be cool in the game, like equipment, or a race, or a deity, or whatever, add it. If you don't like the mechanic of a game, but another game has that mechanic working out, take it. And that's one of the reasons why I have this YouTube channel, is I feel like there's something you can learn from multiple different game systems. And I want I want to bridge the community, I guess you could say, together a little bit more. You know, you may have someone in Call of Cthulhu who's like, hey, you should check out the chase mechanics here, you know. How could we make it work in, I don't know, Dungeons and Dragons? You know, or hey, OVA has like a cool little dice system. How can we put that into one of these games? It's, it's all about what works best for you as a DM. If you, if you try to make the game followed exactly by the book, it's going to become more like homework, you know? Like, um, I own a lot of Pathfinder. And flat out, I'm going to be starting up a game soon. And for Pathfinder, I changed the rules. I told them, like, okay, how we're doing health is you get max health at level 1. And every time you level up, you gain 1 HP. You don't add your con, nothing. And um, essentially, it's going to make the game a lot more lethal. And I'm applying similar rules to the monsters, too. But that's the way I want to play. That's the way they want to play. And, you know, if we come across a rule for the game that we don't know, I'll call it. I, I will make a decision for my players what is best for our game. And, you know, with the game being more lethal, I'll call it in their favor. But once the game is done, we'll look into the rule, you know. If it's, if it's not going to, if it's going to slow down the game, 
do you, do you really want to like be flipping through all the pages, you know? I mean, you could have somebody looking for the rule while it's somebody else's turn. But if you can't find it, just make a call, you know? Um, another thing too, I, I've probably told this story before. If, if so, I apologize. But in my Pathfinder 2e game, my players went up against an Aboleth and they leered it over to towards the shore and while fighting it they managed to pull it out of the water and they struck it with an electric attack well there's no rule for a creature being wet and it taking electric damage and my players asked you know hey can we do critical damage on this thing well I didn't know if there was a rule or not, and I told them, okay, here's what we'll do. If you guys want this to be considered critical damage, I will allow it. However, if the same situation happens reversed, then the same thing happens. This is our new rule for the game. So all the players agreed instantly, no way is that critical damage because I roll for the weather every day and they're like, and I roll random encounters and they're like, ooh, it would suck if it was a rainy day and we were fighting something with electric damage, you know? Which later on we looked at it and there was no rule for it. But that's fine, that's a rule we created. So, new GMs, experienced GMs who feel they need to pay a $60 book just to tell them that they can change the game. I'm giving you permission right now. You you can change your game the way that suits you best. You know, it, whatever makes the game fun for you and your players and keeps the game running and smooth. You know, I don't have a whole lot more to say about it. I think it probably would have been better if, like, I was conversating with someone on this. But, yeah. So, it, tell me in the comments below. And if you were a player or a GM, what rule was made in your game that, like, isn't actually in the book that everyone enjoyed? You know what? You can even tell me ones you guys don't like. I'll tell you one I don't like right now. You got a good one, I'll give you a bad one. Um, one of my games I played, my first game I ever played in, uh, the DM had a rule where every day we roll and see whose gold blows up and they die. So there was a death daily <laughs> every session. So, well, until next time.